Many severe avoidance love therapy and they're addicted to self-help, but they're doing absolutely none of the work. Just because an avoidant is going to therapy doesn't mean they're actually doing the deep dive within to figure out where their issues, their fears and emotions are coming from. They don't do the work and just because they're sitting in front of a therapist, that doesn't mean they're doing any work whatsoever. Keep in mind, a therapist can only go by what the avoidant tells them. If the avoidant only tells the therapist the very surface level issues and doesn't open up to the therapist about all the deeper problems within, the therapist is only gonna have this little surface level to work with. Keep in mind, the therapist is not a miracle worker. They don't have a magic wand. They can assist somebody with their healing process, but that person has to be willing to assist themselves. They have to be willing to do the deep self-reflection that's required towards healing. The therapist can't read the avoidance mind. If the avoidant is still avoiding the deeper issues and avoiding telling the therapist about the things that they don't want to face, those issues will remain unhealed. That's why it's so common for an avoidant to discard a partner even while the avoidant is actively in therapy because they're not actually doing the work. They're going into therapy talking about surface level problems and expecting the therapist to just wave a magic wand and fix them without them having to self-reflect and do the difficult work. Self-reflection is something that is very difficult for avoidance because they have to actually face their feelings, face their emotions, process their emotions, figure out where those emotions are coming from and take accountability, meaning seeing where they've gone right and seeing where they've gone wrong and taking ownership of their behavior and even acknowledging that their behaviors may have hurt people that they care about. That's all painful stuff. They've learned to avoid problems, not to deal with them. So they'd rather suppress the emotions, suppress them and not self-reflect on them. So that's why an avoidant can be in therapy for years and absolutely get nothing out of it. Now, they can go to therapy and get a ton out of it, but that's only when the avoidant is truly a willing participant in their therapy, when they actually dive deep, when they self-reflect and open up to the therapist about the real underlying issues and attachment wounds. And keep in mind too, not all therapists are the same. There are many therapists that don't really have a deep understanding of attachment theory. Many do, many don't. A therapist that is not well versed in attachment theory is going to have a more difficult time understanding the core attachment wounds of the avoidant. Psychotherapists are the best ones for avoidance because they generally have a much broader knowledge in these areas. Again, the avoidant has to be the one to do the work. It doesn't matter how good the therapist is if the avoidant holds back and doesn't self-reflect. 